Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, I got bombarded by requests to cover a new hair loss study from Taiwan. This has been hyped up online and in several mainstream publications as well, like the Daily Mail, New Scientist, and the Times of India. I haven't seen this much hype about a hair loss treatment since people claim that the cure for hair loss is broccoli sprouts. In these articles, Professor Sung Jan Lin, who is the senior author of these papers, says that he has used a serum derived from naturally derived fatty acids on his own skin and found that it promoted regrowth. According to another article, the research team has patented the serum and it may soon be on the market. So, from reading this, you'd think that the new research out of Taiwan was a new study on a serum made out of naturally occurring fatty acids and that they tested the serum on human beings, but that's not the case at all. Here's the article. It was published on October 22nd in the medical journal Cell Metabolism, and as you can guess by the name of the journal, it is a basic research article that used mice and cultured stem cells for the experimentation. This is not human research at all, unfortunately. The the article is very detailed. It describes a whole series of laboratory experiments that were done to prove a hypothesis about how fat cells, also known as adipocytes, participate in the process of wound healing. This article is investigating some very basic mechanisms of wound healing, and it isn't until the very end of the article that the authors imply that what they've found might have applications for human beings. Anyways, I'm sure you guys all know about that case report that was hyped up by Rob Biglish from the 1980s about that guy who burned his scalp and he regrew all of his hair after falling asleep in his rocking chair. This seems remarkable, but it actually has a very simple explanation. You see, very rarely in humans, when injury happens, the tissue will heal back exactly the way it looked before. So, if an injury to the bald scalp happens, in exceptional circumstances, the hair may grow back the way it was before any scar tissue accumulated, meaning any hair that used to be there will grow back normally too. There's even a drug that helps upregulate the mechanism behind this to make hair recovery more likely to happen called vertiporfin that has been used successfully in the private practices of some hair transplant surgeons to regrow transplanted donor hair. I've made several videos about it that I'll link below, but the chances of this type of recovery happening without drugs like vertiporfin is extremely unlikely. Unfortunately, for most people, if you burn your scalp, the skin will be replaced by scar tissue and you will get no hair regrowth whatsoever. So, injuring the skin in human beings doesn't reliably regrow hair. However, there are cases where milder inflammation caused by things like friction, insect bites, or irritation from an orthopedic cast can cause hair growth. So, the investigator set out to see if adipose tissue had any role in hair growth related to inflammation. Adipose tissue forms some of the supporting structure of the skin, so it is nearby the hair follicles and close to the hair follicle stem cells as well. When these stem cells are activated, they trigger the antigen growth phase of the hair cycle and activating these stem cells will cause hair regrowth. So the first step in the study was that the researchers shaved the backs of the mice and used a skin irritant called sodium dodecyl sulfate or SDS on a small square patch of the skin. You can see that this caused great hair regrowth in just 20 days. That's very impressive right there. However, the research just starts there and goes into a whole series of experiments to show exactly why the skin irritation from SDS caused hair regrowth. I won't go into the detailed experiments, but I have to say that they are very convincing in detailing the mechanisms. Here are the steps they proved were happening. The first thing they showed was that the skin injury caused the adipose cells to release the lipids they contained into the tissue. They then showed that it was a specific type of inflammatory cell called macrophage cells that were causing the fat cells to release free fatty acids through a protein called serum amyloid A, or SAA. They then proved that the fatty acids were absorbed by the hair follicle stem cells and that these fatty acids were oxidized by the mitochondria, which led to gene transcription. This caused the stem cells to go from a resting state into an active state which caused the hair growth. Finally, the specific fatty acids that did this were monounsaturated fatty acids like what you would find in high levels in a fat like olive oil. In fact, they tested two monounsaturated fatty acids, oleic acid, C18-1 in this figure, and palmitoleic acid, C16-1 in the figure. And they found that oleic acid had the best effect. The fatty acids were all dissolved in a 100% ethanol solution. That's interesting because there is a lot of oleic acid found in olive oil and there is also palmitoleic acid in it too, though to a lesser degree. So here's an outline of the process that they worked out. 
One of the experiments they did was to skip the inflammatory triggering steps and just apply the monounsaturated fatty acids directly to the skin of the mice to see if the fatty acids alone would cause hair growth, and they did. So it's almost like an afterthought in the article, but this one experiment amongst the dozens they did is what is triggering all the hype about this study. At the end of the article, the authors make the observation that monounsaturated fatty acids easily penetrate the skin and could have potential for treating hair loss conditions. They conclude by saying, quote, Given their inherent hydrophobicity and skin penetration enhancing effect, monounsaturated fatty acids are promising pharmaceutical candidates for topical delivery. Supported by our experimental results demonstrating hair growth activation upon topical application of monounsaturated fatty acids, their natural existence and established safety profiles suggest considerable potential for treating hair loss conditions in the future." Unquote. However, they do admit that this hair growth mechanism has not been validated in human skin. It is still unknown whether monounsaturated fatty acids can enhance human hair growth or whether this is just yet another mouse study that doesn't apply to humans, like so many other treatments before it. So the good news is that this would be all very easy to test on humans. All we would need is a randomized controlled trial that has one group of people applying monounsaturated fatty acids to their scalps and a control group getting a placebo treatment with no monounsaturated fatty acids in it. Then all the researchers would have to do is show that the treatment group had a statistically significant difference in hair growth compared to the control group and voila, that will prove the theory behind this treatment is correct. The bad news though is that it seems very unlikely that this treatment actually works even if the mechanism sounds plausible. Olive oil, which is high in monounsaturated fatty acids, including both oleic acid and palmitoleic acid that were used in the study, has been used for thousands of years. And I know many people apply it to their scalps, even today, especially since it is a very good moisturizer. If olive oil really had such an amazing effect on hair growth, then I think we would have found out by now, especially considering how ubiquitous and ancient the product is. You can easily find anecdotes of people claiming that olive oil did actually help with their hair growth, I mean, who knows? Maybe it did help a little bit, but without some sort of proper control put in place, then there is no way we can tell whether or not these anecdotes are valid or just people having a placebo effect. So this theory is interesting, but I don't think the hype is justified. The lead investigator of this research has patented this treatment and is using it on himself, so it's very clear that he has a big financial interest in hyping this treatment up as a commercial product, but a mouse study is never worth getting this excited about. So until we get some actual good human data out of this product, Product, then we can safely ignore this treatment for now. There are much more promising treatments in the pipeline than this. All right, so I think a quick video like this is all this treatment is worth at the moment. So I'll be back with some more content soon. Thank you all so much for watching Hair Loss Witchers. I'll see you all next time. God bless.